Huge shout out to Forged Irish Stout for being part of this podcast. Listen to that beauty. An unbelievably smooth, creamy stout by Conor McGregor, the UFC legend. Not here to take part, but here to take over. Forged Irish Stout is on a mission to become the biggest Irish stout. Conor McGregor has taken over the whiskey game. Now he's about to take over the stout game. Me and my guests will be enjoying a few cans in the next few episodes. If you fancy checking it out too, make sure you hit the description below and find out where you can get Forged Irish Stout. Forged Irish Stout will be available in Asda nationwide come August. Let's get back to the podcast. I've got a, a top guest in today, someone that I've actually worked with him, played with him, uh, played with his brother, worked with his brother. Two unbelievable geezers. Jack Annick, welcome, mate. Thank you. It's good to be here. You came in at Blackpool and I'd ruptured my Achilles and took my place, basically. Yeah, no, I was just saying that. <laughs> I'm 21. I've just played Premier League. Like, have you got a championship club? And he's like, no. I was like, League One? No, I don't want experience. Around my age, I said, I will pay, play for free. Yeah. I said, honestly, I don't care. Like, as long as it's Get like, me back a in decent the game. St standard. I I'll, and I literally went to Paul Ville and it was like next to nothing. On the bench at Newcastle and I had a pair of Puma gloves that I had bought from Sports Direct. And he was like, uh, the gaffer just told me you're going to Blackpool. And I was like, am I? Am I? <laughs> I was like, I'd heard nothing about it. Next thing, I, I rang my agent. He's like, I know what you're in for. And he was like, Jack, I love you. you keep it up, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to play. <laughs> and I was like... What a save from Mark Howard. Hi guys, I'm thrilled to share something with you today. The Mito Pro 300 from Mito Red Light Therapy. Been a game changer. As an athlete, I know the importance of peak performance and recovery. And that's why I rely on the Mito Pro 300 for its unparalleled benefits. Let's dive in to what makes the Mito Pro 300 remarkable. First off, it's all about power. And this device offers 300 red and near infrared light benefits. These wavelengths penetrate deep into your cells, helping to jumpstart the natural process of recovery and rejuvenation. But it's not just about the numbers, it's about results. The Mito Pro 300 is designed for maximum efficiency. It emits light evenly and directly onto your body, ensuring every inch benefits from this therapeutic light. You might be thinking, why should I choose the Mito Pro 300? Simple, it's a game changer in a world of light therapy. The award-winning quad wavelength design updated with remote control technology. Toggle up and down on the timer, reset unit settings, and operate multiple units with the same remote. If you're dealing with the aches and pains of an active lifestyle, or simply someone looking to improve your overall well-being, the Mito Pro 300 is your solution, and it's versatile. Use it for targeted spot treatments or full body therapy sessions. The choice is yours and the benefits are undeniable. Plus it's easy to use, just plug it in, set your treatment time and relax. There's no steep learning curve, no complications. With the Mito Pro 300, you're not just investing in a device. You're investing in your health, your well-being, and your performance. Don't wait. Discover the incredible benefits of the Mito Pro 300 for yourself. Visit mitoredlight.com and take the first step towards a better you. Hit the link in the description below. Now let's dive back into this episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Yours Mine Away podcast. Obviously, I'm Mark Howard. Uh, you know who I am by now, surely. Uh, I've got a, a top guest in today, someone that I've actually worked with him, uh, played with him, uh, played with his brother, worked with his brother. Uh, two unbelievable geezers. But uh, yeah, Jack Annick, welcome, mate. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming on, mate. Obviously, uh, been trying to tee us up for a long time and uh, and like I said, we've worked together at Blackpool and stuff like that. And You came in at Blackpool and I'd ruptured my Achilles and took my place, basically. Yeah, I no, clearly, I was just saying that. <laughs> that would be a bit awkward, but no, it was. It was a strange time because I obviously knew you were there, but I knew you were going to be out a long time. Yeah. Um, you got a rough deal at the end of Blackpool, mate, by the way. Yeah, it was it was a strange time because I remember I was at Rangers and I obviously came on loan. Um, I think I was meant to go. I was meant to go somewhere else. Um, I can't remember where it was. And they obviously said that you were getting injured, so I came in. I was on loan for 
six months there was a contract put in front of us saying they were ready same to term, sign yeah, it. Yeah, sign permanent. Um, and then next thing, I think I had done my bicep in the oh, yeah. December on Boxing Day. And That's then next thing, they're like, oh, the contract's still there. Next day, Chris Maxwell turned up and obviously after that was COVID, wasn't it, yeah. where no one knew what was happening, didn't hear anything. And then Max, he signed a permanent. And yeah, that was, it was a strange time, but I love what time at Blackpool, even though like, we like we knew you were coming back and stuff like we were we had a leg yeah, them, didn't we? It, it was brilliant. It was like we were training at Squires Gate, weren't we? We were travelling together, cleaning our own kit and stuff. But I thought it was brilliant. We had a great dressing room and like I think because me and you kinda of, like knew each other's careers and yeah. stuff like that, it was like we trained together a little bit, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. It, it was brilliant. We're yeah. Banksy. Oh Banksy, <laughs> mate, the Marine. What were his warm ups when uh, he just takes off? Honestly, it is the fastest jog round pitch I've ever done in my life. <laughs> It's like you, you think, all right, we'll just get into it first day. He was like, bang, gone. He's like, keep up, boys. I was thinking, I can't even sprint that fast. Mate, <laughs> there was, it was so funny. I would just remember, obviously, when I started to come back and Banksy would do his one lap sprint. Yeah. And then, like, me and you look at each other. We had Chris Mafambi and Miles <laughs> Bowley just yeah. going, oh my God, what is going on here? Yeah. Because then he used to go into the footwork afterwards. Yeah, Do you remember away. that one? Oh, we done the. It was behind the goal. It was over about eighteen yards, wasn't it? Eighteen yards worth of fast feet. And I'm not kidding. Like how bad were your legs after yeah. that? But nah, four bounce. He was great. He was like he's one of them that worked you hard, didn't he? But he did, it was yeah. like he knew what he was talking about. But we had a we had a good group there. It was such a different group, yeah. wasn't it? Like you all all their experience. I was on loan. But yeah, me you, uh, me <sighs> fiends and Spio. Yeah, and even like Chris was so laid back. Yeah. You know what he was like. Oh, yeah. And then Miles was like in that transition period, wasn't he? Where he's coming through and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, it was little it was Jack good. Sims as well. Christ, yeah. yeah, he had a good little group. It was funny group. Right? Yeah, no, it was Blackpool was like a great time for me. It yep. was it was like an experience. It was obviously close to North stuff like that, and yeah, just trying to get out and play games. Yep. But then obviously, I think it stopped. That was when COVID stopped, wasn't it? So yeah, I got injured. February, March time, wasn't it? March, I remember I got, I'd done my bicep in the December. I literally came back that day and then they were like, all the games cancelled on Saturday. And then obviously I was out of contract with Rangers at the end of that season. So yeah, yeah it was a strange time, but oh, I loved Blackpool. That <laughs> was class. Right, I wanted to mention, obviously, your brother, Ben. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I played with Ben at Bolton and that. And uh, how, how's he getting on now? No, he's good. He's uh, enjoying retired life, family, stuff like that. So, no, he's he's doing he's doing well. Yeah, retired yeah. far too early. Ben was yeah. some goalie, mate. Apart from his goal kicks where he used to scrape his knee along the floor. You've yeah. got a similar tech as yeah. well, haven't you? Yeah, it's weird. I don't know subconsciously whether I've picked it up often, but everyone used to say the same thing, but you don't realise you're kind of doing it. Um, obviously, you don't have to kick as many long nowadays, yeah, so true, I don't right? have to do that. But, no, he, he definitely retired early, but I think... He started early as well, so yeah. he went to Tottenham when he was 18, spent a long time down there. Um, so he was kind of playing from that age. Yeah, do you very know what I mean? young, yeah. And he could have kept on going, but like, as you've seen with some people, like even Fuzzy could have went to Newcastle. And yeah. They just say, when you're done, you know you're done. Do you know what I mean? So he had just kind of thought, yeah, it's it's time now, which was, we'll say it's way too early because yeah. he's still, I mean... One of the best head and... tennis players as well I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, he keeps mentioning it. He said he should be playing the world championship. He actually should be, mate. He had some mad hip flexors that he would actually put his foot over the other side of the net and then play a drop shot from the other uh, Bizarre, mate. Yeah, because I taught him, because I get told, told all the stories about my brother, but I don't actually know, because I, I know him, I know my brother, you but like, worked he, with him. you have played with him. I, I worked with him a little bit at Peterborough when I went and trained with him oh, for yeah. a little bit, but not not much. Um but he keeps on saying, like, every time I say about head tennis and training, he's like, you'd never beat me. And I'm like, no, I'm a joke as well. And he's like, no, but you never beat us. Like, he swears that no one ever he in football good, will mate. beat him. He was good. <laughs> yeah. He had my number at head tennis. I'll give him that. But he couldn't beat me at foot golf. Yeah. Me and Butts used to tag team up on him on foot golf. He was horrendous yeah. at that. Angriest man ever as yeah, well, isn't just, he? He'd boot the ball away, like, in just like anger. Yeah. yeah. Class. Right. Obviously, uh, I'll get, before we get into it, I'm going to do a couple of quick fire questions. Yeah. Catch or parry? Um, catch, yeah, yeah, all day. That was, that was a hesitation. It was a stutter because I think... I was the way think, the game's changed now. Yeah, I, I always try to catch everything, but then I'm one of them that, like, how many do you actually catch in a game? You don't, do you? I was going to say, I think, I even watched the Premier League and stuff, and I think De Gea used to be brilliant at it, where you'd pluck one, you go, oh my God. Like, yeah. people don't realise it, because most would just bash it and stuff like that. So the game is so different now, where I think... Yeah. I'm edging towards Parry, but I think I'm one of them that likes to be neat and tidy in training. Yeah. So I'm one of them that 
doesn't want to drop a volley, doesn't even want to two touch a volley and stuff like that. See, Asmir was on the show recently and he said that he'll do actual training sessions the whole day where he don't catch it on purpose. He'll parry, oh, really? practice parrying. Yeah. Because in a game, you do it majority of the time. I was like, makes so much sense. Yeah, it does. Because, I mean, what would you catch in a game? One, yeah. maybe? Unless, like, it's just straight at you. It's yeah. Nice so, and tidy ones. Yeah, I'd definitely be catching training, but I do try and, like, caution. If there is a wobble on training, I do just, just bat, it yeah, away. bat it away and stuff like that. But, yeah, I'd go catch. Right. Tea or coffee? I'm coffee. Yeah. Even I, he just had a tea? Yeah, oh, I've that's just mad, had a tea. Man. That's because I've had two coffees on my way up here. Fucking nut and coffee. Yeah. Right, play short, kick it long? Play short. Yeah. But... The whole playing out thing now, I love it, uh, and I love playing out, but I do also like the... I think people go away from playing out as still zinging one in your front man. It's so good, isn't it? That feeling of just finding oh, someone like, 70 yards up the pitch. Yeah, even like sometimes like if you zing one on over a fullback and he flicks it out for a throwing up in their half, you're like, oh, what a kick. Yeah, it's yeah. weird, isn't it? But like people will see that as a, oh, that, that weren't Incomplete a great... Incomplete pass. Yeah, which, I mean, it'll go down against your stats and all that, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But uh, no, I think it's... Uh, it's one of them kicks that you put teams under pressure and yeah. stuff. So I do like the playing outside, but you see with Edison and stuff like that. Do some, both. Sometimes his best kicks where he zings it and someone runs through one on one. So it's still playing out, but yeah, I like the I still like the little clip to the full back and stuff. It's so nice when it lands yeah. on his chest and it. Yeah, when, <laughs> when you actually pull off the little zinger. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, who's your favourite ever goalkeeper? Do you know what it is? I was Casillas as in like I used to watch him, Love he was that. a lefty as well, wasn't yeah. he? Um, agile and stuff like that but he's before your time he was yeah but it was kind of like because my brother was obviously older and it was around, more around his time and stuff like that um, and then weirdly obviously one of your mates it was fuzzy as well Yeah, because I think it was I'm trying to think of who the goalie coach was at the time he said model yourself on someone and he was like you're quick you're agile you're left Lefty. footed and, Makes sense. and Fuzzy was one of them at the time. He used to make so many saves, and like you know, he's like. Yeah. Um, so I used to watch a lot of him. Yeah. Uh, weirdly, because there wasn't that many left-footed goalkeepers yeah. who were like springy and kind of used to sprint around the goal like a madman. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? But agile as yeah. So I I think Fuzzy's got a mad stat. You know, it's like uh, he's let in the most goals in Premier League history, but he's also made the most saves in Premier League. History. Yeah. It's you weird. can see it, like because I look at the, like the Wes Fodring one at the minute, and like he, obviously they're under the caution, yeah. and he's under pressure, but he's also made the most saves most in the saves. Premier League. So it is. It's stats can be unbelievable, but they can also be terrible yeah. when you're not doing that bad. Uh, but no, F- Fozzie was one that I used to I used to love watching, and I think that was one of the best bits of advice is like model yourself on somebody who like is relatable, relatable to, to you, you because 100%. I think we're all different body types. We've all got different power. We've all got different technical attributes I think that was one of the best things where instead of me going and watching I don't know like an Allison, he's com- he might be completely different me. I think you pick someone whichever level it is and go that's what I want to model on yeah. and yeah it was Ben Foster at the time Let's start. good shout right yeah. uh, who's the best keeper in the world right now I think you'd probably have to go with Allison. Obviously, I know Courtois has been out injured and stuff like that. So I think Allison's all round games. Just, just a joke, isn't he? He's pro- you'd probably say Edison's got best better distribution. Pope, he's better at coming for crosses. But all round, if you add it all together, I think he's he's got to be the best. Yeah. Right. Uh, movie or box set? Uh, probably movies at the minute. Yeah. yeah nice. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then finally, right. It's the last minute of a game. You can either save a penalty to win the game or you can go up and score the winning goal. Score all day. 100%, Jack. Yeah. I think it's one of them. You're always like... Dream of it, don't you? Have you ever been in a game before where it's like... Where you're losing and you you want it to get to the 90th minute so you, you do, can yeah. go up. You and you're like looking at the manager going, Yeah. Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Yeah. <laughs> you're just waiting for that little one. Go on. Yeah. But then they, I've been up a few times. The jog up the pitch, how awkward is it? It's you, weird, mate. You feel like you're like jogging up, you're like looking around, you think I'm running a bit weird and like you don't know where to stand once you no. get up there, do you? It's okay. so weird. It's just a distraction, though. People mark you and you're like, what, what, what's, he, what's he doing? Yeah. Why are you standing next to me? It is so uncomfortable, isn't it? But yeah, if you score, <laughs> so far, if you score a winner or an equaliser or something like that, it's something that you're immortal, how many yeah. goalkeepers have done it. You you're know what absolutely mean? immortal. Yeah, man. so yeah, definitely. It has to be. Yeah. Uh, right, let's go back to the start of uh, being a goalkeeper. Then yeah. obviously we're going to talk about your brother a little bit yeah. in this, but like, why, why, why goalkeeping? Basically, my brother. So he, because he used to play in goal, it was like when he used to come home, he was like getting that net. Now I'm smashing a few balls at you. Do you know what I mean? And it was one then when I was younger, 
I was just bigger than everyone. Um, and I used to play outfield a bit and stuff like that, which I think every goalie did. Yeah, um, foul yeah. footballers, didn't we? Yeah, basically. I think I was in middle school at the time and I was a goalkeeper. I was, I'm trying to think what age I'll have been, but I was, I was at Sunderland. But then Newcastle came in and do like the football in the community. So I played outfield and they were like, oh, we want to bring on trial as a striker. And I was like, no, nah, I'm actually a goalie for Sunderland. And they were like, no, you're not. They were like, you're a striker. And I was like, no. Nah. But I think as well, like, you know, I tell you, we're young football, like, because I used to be able to kick it a mile when I was younger. Yeah. I used to score from like goal kicks. Yeah, I mean, and like, so I still used to have that little bit of like, I'm, I used to be a top goal scorer at times because I used to take free kicks from the halfway line and everything, didn't you? Just shoot and score. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was. That was the start of it. My brother kind of, we used to play around, but he obviously, because he was a goalie, he used to want me in goal and yep. stuff like that. Um, obviously, I used to, go, used to go and watch him at Sunderland and stuff. So I think it was quite natural for me to kind of go into it, but weirdly, my dad was nothing to do with football. He was rugby and kickboxing and stuff like that, and it was so weird that we both... Actually, I was going to talk about your dad at some point. Yeah. The most imposing man I've ever seen stare oh. at a warm-up, mate. It's mental. Honestly. He did it for your brother at Bolton. He did it for you at Blackpool. Yeah. Every time like we'd be doing a warm-up, you'd look in the stand and like your, your old fellow was just there staring down. I was yeah. like, I don't know if I'm meant to be doing this right or if he's <laughs> meant to be doing this right. Do you know what it is? He doesn't actually put that much pressure on you. He just loves like coming, even just watching the Shows warm-up. The he's there. Um, I mean, my brother will tell you how many miles he's done like over the years. It's, it was quite good when my brother was at Bolton, I was at Blackpool, or I was at St. and at the time it was like he'd pick the closest one, yeah, uh, or he'd pick like the cheapest train ticket, yeah, like, whoever he'd get to or something like that. But he tried to obviously even it out. Um, but no, he used to be. He used to be there from minute one and stuff like that, but it's class, yeah, mate. he was in He's got that stance, hasn't he? He had his, always had his hands in his pockets, yeah. and he never acknowledged you. <laughs> yeah. And I was like. That's your son. Like, yeah. you're going you're gonna to give it a little... And it was yeah. nothing, mate. <laughs> just stone cold. Yeah, big bald head. Stunned <laughs> the star. Like, like, who again? Yeah. <laughs> nah, he used to love it. It was class, mate. Uh, so, obviously, uh, it's easier to relate to, but your brother came through really young at Sunderland. Was you at Sunderland at that point, or had you already moved to Newcastle? Yeah, so I was at Sunderland at the time. Yeah. Um, I only left Sunderland when I was... My brother had left and I was 15 year old. Was there more pressure on, obviously, because your brother come through the system yeah. almost and he, he, he would have just been breaking into the first team, wouldn't he? Yeah, so he broke in, uh, played, and then obviously he moved to Tottenham when he was 19. Yep. Um, and it wasn't so much a pressure, it was almost like, you know, what my brother's like as a character, he's, he's lively. He's, um, and we were like, we didn't want me to be tarnished with anything because of what he had done or compared to him and stuff yep. like that. And ultimately Newcastle was closer as well for the family. Like they used to put some miles in. My dad would finish work, take me to spend to Sunderland, come back, take me and stuff like that. So it just made sense. And at the time Newcastle probably had the better academy and stuff yep. like that. Um so I wouldn't have said there was more pressure, but I think ultimately you're always going to get looked at like your brother, do you know what I mean? Because he was there Yeah, at the it's time. always going to draw comparisons. Or... Yeah, of course. But it was... No, Sunderland was brilliant, I remember, because Pickford was the air below me as well, wasn't he? Um, and I remember he, he had an injury and it was Tim Carter at the time. was like, oh, Jack, can you go and perform? Like, he had an injury. He's like, can you, like, almost teach him how to dive again? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, he can't collapse his knee and, like... So it was like I was weirdly streets ahead of him, but like you look at him now, it's so weird how it's it goes crazy. from that to. He might have been modelling himself on you then, lefty, uh, yeah. similar build. Uh, yeah, I know it, it is. It's so strange that he was, he was kind of the weren't sure whether to keep him or not. Uh, he had these injuries, and then yeah. loan moves really looked after him. Yeah, but obviously awesome. you end up going to to Newcastle, and yeah. you broke in quite soon. Yeah, like obviously, uh, you see uh, again like. The talent factory up in the north is mad, yeah. actually, when yeah. you think about especially the level of goalkeepers that they have produced. Yeah. I think it's because, obviously, you have Newcastle, Sun and Middlesbrough, and then you've just got a big gap down the country, True. don't you? So you get the best of the bunch up that way, um, even late times from Scotland, people coming down and that. But, yeah, it was we had obviously went to Newcastle, I broke in. I think I was 21-year-old. Um, made my debut coming out half time against Chelsea and stuff. It was Rob Elliott come off injured and then you go on and make your prem debut. Yeah, it was it was so strange at Newcastle because I'd never been out on loan and it was weird. I went on a pre season to New Zealand with um with the first team and Andy Woodman said, Oh, you've killed yourself here. Yeah. And I was like, What do you mean? He's like, You've been that good, you're gonna be third choice next season. And I was like, 
that's brilliant. Like, do you yeah, know what I mean? Button. Yeah, I was like, that's what I wanted. Do you know what I mean? Because um, I think it was Tim and Rob, Tim Cruel and Rob Elliott at the time. And he said, like, the gaffer said, like, he trusts you that much, like, you've done that well. And I was like, but why is that bad? And he's like, because you're not going out on loan sort of thing. And I was like, when you're young, you're like, I don't care. I'm at Newcastle, like, whatever, do you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, it ended up, like, ultimately being a really good thing because I ended up playing for Newcastle, but also really bad because I didn't play till 21. I'd never played before. You hadn't had many games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I had six games out on loan at Gateshead or something like that yep. when I was 18. And then it was almost just, like, reserve football um, just training with the first team and stuff like that and then all of a sudden you get thrown in it's kind of like I've not really kicked a men's football do you know what I mean and yeah, yeah. 20, 21 years old under the pressure of fans and stuff obviously yeah. Newcastle fan base is notoriously unbelievable yeah the pressure that that involves as a young goalkeeper yeah and I think it was like my debut I'd done brilliant came on at half time it's weird because I I kind of half knew I was going to play I remember Tim Dunny Shaw that was out for quite a while um Rob had been complaining of his quad for like three, four games, scanned it, nothing, nothing. Um, and I remember it was a kick before half time, just quad gone. And um, like I sat there on the bench and I was like, he's not getting up. And it was like, I had half time where I didn't know whether to warm up, I didn't yeah, know whether. Yeah. But, uh, it's like, the worst feeling in the world, that. Yeah. Do you know what it is? It's weird. Like, even Championship now, like last season when I was on the bench, I was more nervous than I was playing in the games. Yeah. It's so weird, yeah. isn't it? Because you can never come on in a good situation, really. You're not prepared to no. come on. Um, As a goalie, you're not warming up on the side, catching volleys and doing crosses, are no. you? No, and you can run down the line and give it all this, but it's not going to do anything, is it? Like stretching your shoulder and all yeah. that. But yeah, I think I had half time to warm up. Um, Alan Pardew and Woody were great, and they were like, got nothing to lose. And I was I was out of contract at the... So that was in the December, January time. I was out of contract that mm-hmm. summer at Newcastle. And um, I think it was Pardew said, like, time to make yourself a millionaire or something like that. It was something, and I was thinking... A little tongue-in-cheek think, comment. Yeah, because it is. If you're a 21-year-old goalkeeper out of contract in the summer, playing in the Premier League, you go and do well. Like, the world's your oyster, isn't it? Yeah, you could be anything. Um, but yeah, it was obviously I'd done brilliant against Chelsea. We beat them 2-1 at home. Incredible. And then it's weird. I think I played six or seven games. It was what you'd expect from a 21-year-old goalkeeper who's never played. <laughs> I'd, and then yeah. start to plateau a it little was, bit. It was. Yeah. Like brilliant Chelsea. Yeah. And then I think I played in the cup quarter final against Tottenham away. Had a beast. Yeah. And then I played in Newcastle Sunderland Derby. Had a really good game, but got beat 1-0. Um, and then, yeah, I had another poorish game and then another good game, which is what you'd expect 100%. from someone... It's, it's the emotional roller coaster, isn't yeah. it? Like you, you have the high of making your debut and doing well, and then you're yeah. like the come down. It's harder to then go again. Yeah, and like you're gonna have a dip before you go back up. Yeah, and I remember I'd done my shoulder in the Tottenham game away. I landed awkwardly, and I remember like the day before Sunland, I was like, the the pain was like I shouldn't even have played. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But I was like, I'm in this team. Like I could have a broken leg, and I'm not. Yeah, like, yeah. coming not out this team. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, it was. Um, so I got I got through the games and stuff like that, but it was I think when I if I'd have been twenty one playing in League Two, League One, conference, something like that, like if you do like make a tiny little mistake or like a tiny little technical error, you kinda can get away with you certain can, yeah, things. Yeah, 100%. Whereas there it was kinda like I came for a I think I came for a cross against Tottenham and it just slipped out, dropped down, and I've went to fall and bang, go. And I was like in other leagues, you might just get away yeah. with it and stuff like that, but it was... Uh, You've not seen it on Match of the Day either. No, well, that's the thing, especially when you're young, like, you're watching every single highlight, stuff like that, and at the time, it was tough, um, but then picked myself up for the derby again, done brilliantly, so, yeah, it was high-low, high-low, but then, obviously, that... I think after that, I went on loan to Bradford for to one Bradford game. for one game, yeah, I've read, I've read that. Yeah, it was weird, because uh, it was Parky at the time, who obviously you know really well, and... Um, Ben Williams was there at the time. I went on loan for one one game played, but then they were doing that. They had a good FA Cup run, didn't yep. they? And then they had an FA Cup game, I think it was midweek. I think they, Ben done all right. And then Party said, oh yeah, Ben's playing. I was like, I thought I came on loan to play, do you know what I mean? Um, and then I ended up doing my wrist straight away and it was back to Newcastle, but I was out of contract that summer. It was, And that summer, I literally had no clubs. Yeah. It's crazy, that situation of you've gone from playing in the Premier League yeah. and doing well obviously intermittently like you're saying like a bit of form it's difficult at that age yeah. but then to at the end of a season yeah. have nothing yeah it was so weird because I, 
I was speaking to my agent at the time and I was like, I'm 21, I've just played Premier League. Like, have you got a championship club? And he was like, nah. I was like, League One? Nah, the one experience. Like, I think it was at the time, like, I think even someone like Accrington took someone like Brian Jensen or something who was like 40, yeah, like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. it was like, he's got no experience. Um, and I was sitting there thinking, I think I went on tri- I went on trial at Leeds and a Motherwell. Yeah. Uh, Leeds done really well. It was like pre-season type thing. And they said, oh, we're, we're not giving you a contract because you got beaten in the running by the other goalkeepers. And I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> but I was like, yeah, but I'm a goalkeeper. And I was like, how many goals did I concede this week? And I was like, I'll, I'll tell you, none. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, it was just, I think Leeds were going through that sort of transition period and then Turnbull ended up signing. So I don't know if that was in the works while I was on trial. I was going to say, he didn't beat you in the running, surely. <laughs> yeah, no, he signed up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Motherwell went up there, was training, doing really well. Next thing, Connor Ripley turned up and I was like, you're right, mate. <laughs> like, I knew him. Yeah. I knew him. And I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, he was like, oh, I've just signed on loan. I was like, what? Like, it was such a weird time that. I say, like, how can I go from the highs of playing the Premier League so yep. young to literally have nothing? And the only way I got into Port Vale, my best mate at the time, he was playing for Port Vale, and uh, Chris Neal was out injured, and they had two lads that were mixing and matching pre-season. One was Ryan Boot and one was Sam Johnson, not Sam Johnson, that yeah. played for West Brom Palace. And yeah. Stuff. Um, and they both struggled, and he went and seen them. My mate went and seen the manager. He said, oh, Jack's free. He's like, what do you mean he's free? So he hasn't got a club. And I signed for Portville on the Friday and played on the Saturday. No way, yeah. yeah. Just from someone else putting a word in. Yeah. That would have been quite late then, after pre-season. So yeah. look, going, yeah. I've done it a few times now, but going uh, through pre-season, not having a club, oh, it's ming and earth. It's scary because well, me and you have probably seen so many people fall out of the game. 100%. And you kind of get to that stage where you start to panic a little bit mm. and then... You get people saying, oh, don't worry, there'll be an injury in the first couple of games or there'll be a send-off or whatever and someone will take you. And it never, ever happens. No, it doesn't, no. It, it's one of them things as well. Like, people might want to take you, but then they go, oh, like, where's he been training? Uh, nowhere. When <laughs> like, you're watching the results on a Saturday, hoping for an injury, and you're yeah. actually looking through the results going, any yeah. goalkeepers get subbed off. Yeah. And it's, like, I've been there a couple of times and it's a dark place. Yeah. Because on a Saturday, like, I, I, I've done it when I've had kids and I'm like, this is mental that I'm yeah. actually doing this and yeah. I'm not like giving the, my kids the time because I'm thinking, Oh yeah. but like I've, I've trained with other clubs through pre-season just to stay fit and be yeah. ready and lucky enough it like you end up, something comes out of nowhere, yeah. but like the Port Vale one of your mate just putting your name in and it works yeah. out. And If it wasn't that like you don't know what it could yeah. have been, do you know what I mean? So yeah, it was scary but like you say, I've done it at times where you're not playing somewhere and you're allowed to leave or you haven't got a club, you're literally on like on the BBC yeah. app, like you're clicking la- line up and you're like, he stayed on. Like yeah. it is, you look at like the standard that you picture yourself in yeah. and you see if any goalkeepers have came off, if any have came off, you're like, you're, you're your googling their name, like yeah. how long they're out for and yeah. stuff like that. It is, it's such a, it's such a strange, strange position. I yeah. think only us would do that. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, obviously going to Port Vale, you end up going to Port Vale and playing yeah. literally like every game that season. Yeah. I think you actually got young player of the season as yeah. well that first year. Yeah. Like obviously from, do you think that that drove you, that little bit of, of a scare early on in your yeah. career of like not having anything to then going in and establishing yourself straight away and playing every game? Yeah, and it was almost like I went there because I basically, I ran my agent, I said, I will pay, play for free. Yeah. I said, honestly, I don't care. Like, as long as it's like a decent st- standard, I'll play. And I literally went to Port Vale and it was like next to nothing. But I was like, I need to go and back myself to get them games and then sort of money will come or whatever will come. I just need to play them games. And I think I just went with, with a bit between my teeth of like, this is it now, you, you have to do well yeah. or yeah, yeah. what could happen sort of thing. And I think I just like dug in real, real deep and it was... It was a brilliant time for us. It was a perfect type of club. Um, World's biggest pitch as well. Yeah, which it was good for a goalkeeper because you could spray passes about and also like... Crosses were coming in, but you had more gaps. Yeah, and I think like it was one of them that there was there weren't ever a great game at Port Vale. So you didn't always have loads to do, do you know what I mean? Apart from like when you got like Sheffield coming and stuff like that. But And I think as well at the time... Um, the type of manager I had in Rob Page, who's obviously now Wales manager, and the goalkeeping coach, Dave Timmons. It was almost like I needed people like that at the time. Yeah. Um, 
because Tim was you were with Tim Harvin, yeah. yeah, and he was great for me. Um, anything I wanted after a game, he's got or, Tourette's as well, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean he's absolutely crazy. But like, I think I kind of needed that at the time. I didn't need to really be. I needed to be coached a little bit, but it was almost like I needed someone to man manage me because yeah, of yeah. where I've been yep. to there. Treat you like an adult and let you crack on. Yeah, and then Rob Page was exactly the same. He had just finished playing, um, knew I was a young goalkeeper at the time, and he he just said, you're going to just keep playing and keep playing. He's like, any time there's a chance to move you on, like you can go sort of thing. And he was amazing for us. So I think that I couldn't have picked a better club at the time. I love my time there. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the, the season after, you actually got named captain as well. Yeah. So, like, to go from, like we're saying, like, being out of contract, yeah. a, a mate put in a good word, you get yeah. player of the season, then you get named captain, and yeah. you're still only 22. Yeah. Madness, that. Yeah, it, it changed so quick because it was weird, even when I got named captain, so we had a Portuguese manager come in, um, and I loved him, Bruno Ribeiro, he used to play for Leeds, I think. Yeah. Um we had a goalkeeping coach who didn't speak a word of English, whose sessions were like, I've never seen anything like it. But, um, and then they signed a Portuguese goalkeeper, and I was like, I'm done. Even though I had done so well the season before, you know what it's like, sometimes they bring their mates over, or yeah, whatever yeah. it might be. And uh, yeah, he calls in, he said, oh, we've got three captains, and he wanted me to be one. I was like, I'm only 22. And I was like, this is like, it, it was worth giving up, like at the start where I was like, I'll pay, play for no money, whatever it might be, to get to that. And I knew I was so close to having another good year or six months or whatever it might be to to getting a decent sort of move. Um, but yeah, it was like that grew. I grew up quickly with that. Obviously, I I'd moved away from home, which I'd never really done before, yeah. and also like made captain and stuff at so such a young age. Just yeah, you. it almost made us grow because I'd been so sheltered being at Newcastle Academy. Yeah. To then being, uh, I'm in England youth teams, like you almost like kind of the big I am at that age. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, to yeah. almost like you're at Port Vale. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I knew this that, is real football now. Yeah. And no, it was it was one of them places that I was at where it was just game by game. I knew I was going to do well. And you know what it's like when you're confident. You, you feel like you can save everything. It's one of them that when you get the confidence of knowing that you're playing the week after. Yeah. You're not fearful of mistakes. No. So you can go out and express yourself yeah. and you'll you'll make more saves, you'll come for more crosses, yeah. you'll kick the ball better because you've not got that monkey on your back going, yeah. if you make a mistake, you're not playing next week. Yeah. And I think it does. I think that's what a lot of people don't realise in football that like everything's confidence and I think you can say this goalkeeper's better than that goalkeeper, but sometimes it's not. It's like they're more confident than them at the minute, do you know what I mean? On the day. Yeah, like are we saying oh Nana's a terrible goalkeeper? No, he's just low on confidence, yeah. but if you look at every attribute he's got, he's probably one of the best, the most powerful yeah. distribu distribution. It's yeah. just the, when Starting you go through a little yeah. bit of a bad spell, you know what it's like. So, yeah, I think then I knew I was going to play like every single game. So I almost kind of, you just go in so relaxed. Yeah. Like, you'll come for a cross 10 yards out because you think, even if I drop it, like, I'm going to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we had a we had a good squad around there, all the lads, stuff like that. We had a, we had a great laugh. Um... And then after every game on a Saturday, I used to drive back up to Newcastle, like because I was with Remy Street at the time. He was my mate, who was from Newcastle. We used to drive Newcastle a couple of hours, have a little night out, and then we went back on the Sunday night. But now it was it was a great time Class, my life. Yeah. That one, yeah. And then obviously in, in the January, then you end up moving to Rangers, didn't you? Yeah, I remember. I actually remember the game. Um, so my my agent rang us and said, "Our oh, Rangers are having a little look at you and stuff like that." Um, and then we played all them away. And I remember it so clear because my agent, they never normally do this at the time. He rang me and he said, oh, uh, Frank McFall, I think he's called it, is coming to the game. And I was like, all right. And I had the biggest world he ever against all the way. I think it was nil-nil or something like that. And uh, he rang straight after the game, yeah, we, we want to get the deal done. Um, and then I ended up doing my ankle. I think it was in training or something, like a couple of days later. Oh, we had an FA Cup game or it was something like that. I'd done my ankle. And uh, I think it was like a grade two something. They were like, oh, it's four or six weeks. And I'm thinking, well, it's, it's not. two weeks till the end of the window. Like, it's not. Yeah. Uh, so I came back within two weeks just to kind of push the move through. Yeah, yeah. Like I knew it was time. Do you know what I mean? I had to like... But also you'd taken the hit in the money and then you're like, well, I've done as much as I can possibly do at Port Vale. Yeah. I need to go back out now and push myself on again. Yeah. It, and I mean, when Rangers come calling, there's... Like there's no bigger clubs, do you know what I mean? It's it's 
I couldn't refuse to go there, do yeah. you know what I mean? And I thought I could keep playing till the end of the season, I'm out of contract, I could maybe go somewhere else. And I was like, I'm not going to even take the risk of that, like, especially when a club like that came yeah. in. But yeah, I remember it was just kind of get up to Glasgow, but I had a I had a bio clause in my contract or something like that. So it was like... Done like, behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, it was logistics and got up there and I was like, yeah, this is the one. So you were, were obviously going up there going from playing and being a captain to then being told you're going to compete with Wes. Yeah. Like, that's a different mental switch you have to turn yeah. on, isn't it, to be able to turn up and accept that's the situation. Yeah, I think at the time uh, I spoke to Mark Warburton, who was the manager at the time, and he said, listen, Wes is struggling a little bit. Um, come up here, he says, and you're going to play, but you are going to fight it out yeah. and stuff. And I thought that's no problem whatsoever. Obviously... Leaving Portville, I was so confident. I was captain, like you say. Yep. You kind of think you could put the best goalkeeper in the world in front of me and it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I got up there and Warburton, I don't know if he left or was sacked two weeks later. And I was like, typical you couldn't worst. write it. Do you know what I mean? A manager typical, that's yeah. wanted me at the club um, has gone within like two weeks. Um, and then, yeah, we obviously had a lot of manager changes up there. But no, it was, it was a great fight between me and Wes, kind of... Yeah. But obviously, you know, it's like when you have a lot of manager changes, it's kind of like they go with what they know, who's been playing. Oh, kind said of. before, the experience, one that's been playing yeah. or has more appearances. Yeah, so it was difficult because I felt like I was training really well. But because Rangers is such a big club, like it can eat a goalkeeper up, especially. Yep. And I think at times they were trying to protect me because I hadn't really played. Um, but then also, yeah, I was just like, it was so frustrating yeah, because... Yeah. Then once one manager had getting in for a little bit, you think, oh, he might stick me in, yeah. He then left, and it it was so it was so tough, but honestly, I couldn't speak a bad word about that club. See, like when club. A, a new manager comes in, you go, right, I'm going to have a... Like, you, yeah. you mentally have a little charge up yourself. You're like, this is the one. This yeah. is the one that's going to play yeah. me, isn't it? Don't you? Yeah, it's just and that then, like, After least. the first week, you're like, I've trained unbelievable. Yeah. Saturday comes, you're like, when you're not in the team, you go... Oh, <laughs> clean sheet yeah, yeah. Cheers. and they, yeah. Like, they have nothing to do in the game yeah. they keep a clean sheet you're like yeah ah it's just typical yeah always always the same and i remember the we had a portuguese manager came in pedro cushini at the time and he was like jack i love you as a goalkeeper blah blah but you're not gonna play <laughs> <laughs> and i was like he's like i think you're better than wes but wes is gonna play saturday and i was like i was like what do you know what i mean but yeah. it was it's weird because I kind of went from Newcastle to Port Vale to then another big Massive club. club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was uh, no, it was it was a great time. It was a tough time, but I, I was still trying to pave my way in the game, sort yeah. of thing. And I thought that was the next step. But if I probably look back, I wouldn't take my Rangers time back at all. But I, w I was thinking if I had just stayed at Port Vale another six months, like what could have happened yeah. from there? But no, it was uh, that's easy in hindsight. Yeah, then, everything like, is. Yeah. You, even like that, you, the frustrations of being in and out of a team or yeah. not playing at Rangers, and then you go out on loan to to Scunthorpe and to Blackpool, and you yeah. get the game time that you yeah. feel like you deserve. Yeah, and like obviously, that's the tough times are what make you a stronger person. Yeah, definitely. So like, then you go out on loan and you get the game time, and then yeah. you're then treated like, oh, he's nice, he's an established player, he's got over yeah. 100 appearances now, he's got 150 appearances. Yeah, and you get treated differently, didn't you, when oh, you walk in the dressing room? Yeah, I think. You kind of want to get to a hundred. Everyone, yeah. everyone says it, don't they? Hundred league games, Run, yeah. Race to 100. And once you've got that, whatever standard it's at, you can make a career off a hundred appearances. Hundred um, percent. And that was me at Rangers. I remember I was meant to go on loan to Barn Barnsley at the time, and uh, Barnsley were waiting to get the deal done. Um, and I think they had Adam Davies who was moving on, and Rangers couldn't quite do it at that time. They didn't know what they were doing, and then. Barnsley were like, listen, we can't wait that late, and they pulled out. Yep. Barnsley ended up getting promoted that season. Oh, typical. And I went on, I, I was like, who needs a goalkeeper? And last minute it was Scunthorpe, and I was like, well, Scunthorpe were in the playoffs last season, yep. great club, like, yep. go and play some football, stuff like that, and I ended up going to Scunthorpe and getting relegated. That's oh, typical, isn't it? But it was, it, it was, do you know what it is? We did get relegated, but it was a great experience for me. Yeah, I think it was the first. I was travelling to Scunthorpe. We had Tony McMahon and Lee Novak was my car school. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might have. Have you played with both of them? I, I, I've played with Tony McMahon. I haven't played with Novak, but I know a few stories. Yeah. Oh, it was like two experienced pros. Like 
when we say wild Tony McMahon, like he is like the most a young person. kid, like in a dressing room. Like he was like the oldest, but I would act like a little kid in the dressing room. But like, yeah, I was traveling in with them too, like every day. So that was a new experience of like traveling to Scunthorpe, like every other day, yeah. stuff like that. Um, and then the relegation thing, obviously it wasn't as hard for me because I was still on loan. I still had a year left at Rangers, I think I had. Yeah. So it wasn't tough, but like that season it was like, I'd love to know how many deflections went in. Like just, just the luck. It was just one of them seasons where I was doing well, but like two deflections were going in a game or stuff like that. Um, but you learn from stuff like that. Yeah. Like when when I watch back like games against Scunthorpe and like when I played for Scunthorpe and stuff like that, I think like stuff you'd do differently and stuff like that. But it was great for me at the time because it's almost like right, this is real like sort of thing. It's, People's jobs were on the line and it yeah, it's more. weird because I didn't, at Newcastle it was like, I'm just trying to get in the team. I went to Port Vale and it was almost like, I wasn't worried about winning at Port Vale. I needed to do well for myself sort yeah. of thing. Um, Rangers, you have like the big club, but then Scunthorpe when I got relegated, I was like, oh, this is actually real. Do you yeah, I mean, it wasn't until yeah, yeah, that yeah. point where I was like, my mate who was Lee Novak, who was signed at the club, he was like, sat on the bus, like devastated and stuff like that. I was like, this is actually real, and it took to that point yep. for me to realise it, do you know what I mean? And then obviously the next one was Blackpool after that, and I feel like the Scunthorpe one, though it was a real low, it was really good Matured for me. you as a person. Yeah, yeah. and then I remember because Stephen Gerrard had getting the, I think, yeah, he had getting the job about Rangers, and I had played a full season for Scunthorpe, and uh, he rang me, he was like, you're not done. I was like, oh, I'm ready to go like on holiday, and he was like, no, uh, I want to see you play in a game. I'm thinking I've played 40 odd games, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he says, No, nah, we're playing against Chelsea 23s at Rangers at Ibrox. And I was like, Do you know what you're like? Oh, God. Like, you know what them <laughs> games are like, do you know? <laughs> you're half on holiday, aren't you? Yeah. And I remember, he, he, uh, I went up, I had a worldie. It was like one of the best games I've ever had. Because you relax now. I, don't, yeah. I thought I've been on loan, like playing men's football, yeah. like we're playing against like young lads, a little Chelsea, the what a joke. Um, done really well. And yeah, Gerard had kind of said to me, like, listen, we're bringing in Al McGregor, um, but Wes is going, I want to give you a new contract, I want you to, it's going to be you and Al McGregor, he's not going to be able to play every single game, yeah. and then, yeah, they couldn't get rid of Wes, and I ended up, I remember Wes went up for a meeting with Stephen Gerrard, and he came down, he's like, it was almost like both of us wanted to leave, for like separate reasons, yeah. like I obviously wanted to go and play football, but I wasn't pushing because I knew I was getting a new contract at yeah, Rangers, yeah, yeah. Um, Wes was trying to leave because Greeks had came play, in yeah, yeah. and he had been playing a lot of games at Rangers and um, they couldn't get rid of Wes and Wes came down and was like, you've beat me to the punch and I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, uh, the gaffers just told me you're going to Blackpool and I was like, am I? Am I? <laughs> I was like, I'd heard nothing about it. Next thing, I, I rang my agent at the time, I was like, he's like, I know what you're ringing for. I was like, Blackpool? And he was like, well, we've had a conversation. I was like, I thought I was signing a new contract here and staying to fight it out. And yeah, it was, I don't know what had happened at the time. Um, and then I thought, listen, like, I want my own career in my hands. Yeah. I don't want to be, so I thought if there's a chance to go, good club, yeah. League One at the time, yeah. I thought, like, I'd like to have the career in my hands, so I'll go and play. Yeah. I could have waited round and Wes maybe could have went, I could have signed a new deal, whatever could have happened, but I thought, if I'm playing, like I'm in charge of myself. Yeah, 100%. Um, so yeah, I just went, right, well, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, oh, it makes yeah. sense. And then obviously, uh, St Mirren, we've played for so many of the same clubs, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Obviously, we are talking about this off there, but like, Scunthorpe, Blackpool, St, St. Mirren, Cardiff. Cardiff. Yeah. Bloody mad, that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a much better career than me as well. <laughs> so we're in some club, by the way, isn't it? Yeah, that that one was um, that one was during COVID. Obviously, I went, I was at Blackpool, and then I got injured. Um, COVID came about in the March, and obviously the leagues kind of stopped, didn't they? Yeah. And I didn't have a I didn't have a club, and I remember at the time I was like, do I wait till the summer when? Because everyone didn't know their budgets, because we didn't know what was going to happen. Everyone was like. We don't know whether football's going to come back or anything yeah. like that. But I was out of contract in the summer and I was like, it was such a weird place to be in. Um, and Jim Goodwin rang me from St Mirren and he said, listen, I know you're way better than us. And he said, but he said, I think that like with what's going on, he says, come here. He said, we'll give you a two year deal. Um, he says, do a year, do well and get yourself off sort of thing. Um, 
and I looked at it and I thought I probably do need one more kind of to full establish season. myself. Full season of games. Yeah. yeah, and it was almost like a bit between my teeth because it didn't really work out at Rangers and I didn't really play. It was almost like I need to prove to people that I can play in Scotland sort of thing yeah. and show them what they're kind of missing. Um, but no, uh, I was humming and harming, do I do St Mirren, do I kind of wait out and because I had done well at Blackpool and got yeah, injured, you know, yeah. I was like, there could be something a little bit better. And I thought, listen, nobody knows what's going on. Like, I'll take. I even thought I'll take the contract. And if football cancels, like, you still owed your money, sort yeah, of thing. Like, yeah, I didn't you can know go what for security. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know what to do at the time. Um, and then, yeah, that turned out to be the best move for me. Um, great club, like you say. It's, it's a great like little club. Little family-run club. Yeah. Pitch is always decent. Training grounds nice. Yeah, it's and. I don't know what you think about when you played in Scotland, but I find as a goalkeeper, it's, it's quite nice games to play in. 100%. Because you go from one week you're playing against 50,000 fans. Yeah. Like, I don't even look at it as opposition. I no. look at it as grounds and fans. Yeah. Like my time. And then, like, the next week, it'll be a total different game. Yeah. You'd be coming for crosses. You'd be making saves. Yeah. And then, you'd like, the week after, again, you'd be playing, like hearts away it was hostile yeah yeah and like you're just like I, I couldn't experience this in one league no. in england at no. all and then like again the week after you'd be like ibrox away yeah front of like forty thousand fans yeah but you would you'd only have two game involvements yeah and you'd have let in two goals yeah oh yeah all and like, you wouldn't have touched a ball <laughs> yeah. and you're like this is mental this yeah. but then you go back at home and you'd be like right let's tough this one out we, yeah. need, we need a result against the ones that you need results against yeah ross counties and stuff yeah. but i thought it gets a lot of stick, like the stand up there. I thought it was brilliant. Unbelievable. I loved it. Yeah, I thought, like, I think it's a brilliant shop window for goalkeepers yeah. as well because you play against, like, you Celtics, your Rangers, your Hearts, your Hibs, stuff like that. And then also you show that you can dig in as well against, yeah. like, where you've got to come for crosses. Like you say, every game's so different that, like, yeah, you can make 10 saves against Celtic, but can you come for crosses? And then you play against Ross County and you've got to come and take 10 crosses. Yeah. So. I thought that league and it's different conditions up there, different stadiums, uh, it does. It. I, I loved it. It brought you like the highs and the lows of like, yeah, 50,000, 2,000. But no, I, I love playing in Scotland. I also think that the dressing rooms in Scotland are different. Yeah. I don't know. I always put, uh, attribute it to the, the wage structure. See, so like at St. Mirren, like the top earner and the bottom earner, yeah. they're not a million miles no, between. No. So the, the, there's no arrogancy. Yeah. There's no massive big time player no. or like is out of their depth. No. The, even the, the ones that are on low value money yeah. still feel valued within a squad. Yeah. And I loved like the, that sort of aspect of the dressing room at St. Mirren. Yeah. No one really cared. And it no. was like you were playing with your mates sort That's of thing. It, yeah. And even like lads that had and great man like you you know Ryan Flynn yeah. stuff like that had a great career. He was in that same mirror and dressing room and it's like they almost know that for whatever reason you are all at that club for one reason or another. Exactly yeah. Um and I found that with Scotland there was yeah. never there was never one person that I'd say, oh maybe he's not to speak to him anymore. It was it was unbelievable yeah. that dressing room. Um the social aspect of playing in Scotland's class, like going yeah. out after training, going for coffees or going out like at the weekends yeah. with the boys and that just I always found that the the environment was such a like a positive one about yeah. being a team together. Yeah. Yeah. You'd want to socialise more with those lads. Yeah, and I think Scotland, because it's such a drinking culture and a football culture, yeah. that's it really. Yeah. Um, it was so big up there. Even when you played for like St Mirren's and stuff like that, it was because as well you always had like lads in the dressing room who were either Celtic or Rangers yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So the, the banter that used to fly around that dressing room, yeah. they are... They're amazing. But yeah, I'd done two years up there. Yeah. Um, and again, it was one of them I just knew I had to play. Yeah. Um, and it's weird. I go through my career and I'm kind of like, God, I've went like up, down, up, down, up, down. You don't know when you're really going to like yeah. be established. Yeah. Um, and I remember someone said to me, they're like, you're so unlucky. And I'm like, no, I'm just still building my way. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes it takes goalkeepers to... Yeah, as like Pickford, it took him a couple of years on loan yep. and he was already there. Yeah, yeah. Whereas sometimes it takes to like 32 year old where you're almost like, oh yeah, I'm there now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he, he, I always look at Martinez now that he had, he was at Arsenal as a kid, yeah. had like loads of loans. None of them really worked out. Rotherham and Wolves. No. He weren't really establishing himself. No. And then he played the cup games for Arsenal. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, he's yeah. gone on to be a World Cup winner from yeah. like, playing a few cup games. From yeah. nowhere. Yeah. So I think. St Mirren it was I mean I was in the form of my career I yeah. think 
if I look back, I'd have probably had one or two bad games in two yeah. years. It was it, it was amazing. Even in times where we got battered off Celtic fours and fives, I was getting man of the match yeah. and stuff like that. So I remember at that time. So before you signed, Flinney used to phone me about every goalkeeper somewhere and something. Yeah. And he'd be like, what do you think of Jack? And I sung your praises massively. Yeah. And within two weeks, he phoned me back and was like, you're fucking right. Yeah. He was like, he's class. I'm yeah. real. And then like, like yeah, I still speak to Flynn to this day. Yeah. Constantly, he was like, he was, he was right. Like, he was yeah. spot on. He was great. He was actually brilliant for me. I love Flynn. He, like, what a character. A like, guy, little, like, training. Like, it didn't matter whether he was playing. Like, the career that he's had, like, yeah. it didn't matter whether he was playing or not. He was like the best trainer every single day, and yeah. even when he wasn't, he would run the most. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he used to like he used to help me quite a lot because the amount of games he would come up to me like just after a game and go, "Won us another three points by that save," and yeah. like just them little things. Nuggets, and, like, isn't it? like sometimes he would sit down in the dressing room with me and go, "Like I wonder how many points you've won us this season." He said, like, "I'd love to like look back." And you know, like lads like that, sometimes they just give you that little bit more yeah, yeah. confidence. Yeah, hundred percent. Because even like then the next week. He'll come up to you before the game, so same again. Yeah, the same, same again, again shouts the best, isn't yeah, it? Like it is. It's yeah, just, just when, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, when you, I think you know when you've like done well, where like you shake all the ha lads' yeah. hand before a game, same again. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like yeah, you kind of establish yourself. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. no, it's, St. Mirren was, uh, yeah, it was brilliant. Two years and then kind of moved on. To right. Before Nashville. we get onto Cardiff, I'm going to do my quiz then. Yeah. So goalie or no goalie? What's your goalie knowledge like? Hey there, I'm Mark Howard, professional goalkeeper and the host of the Yours Mine Away podcast. Today I'm thrilled to share my secret with you. When I got my hands on active collagen, it was an absolute game changer for me. As football players, we all want to train hard, play harder and recover faster. Since rupturing my Achilles six years ago, I've relied on collagen supplements to help me remain injury free. After trying various brands, I found my perfect match with you perform. Mm. Packed with two unique bioactive collagen peptides. It's the UK's number one choice for both prehab and rehab. Say goodbye to injury worries and hello to enhanced performance. Collagen is key for your muscles, your tendons and ligaments. But here's the kicker, as we age, we lose it. You Perform's active collagen doesn't just replenish, it turbocharges your natural collagen production. Simply take one gel a day, it really is that simple. And for the result, feel unbeatable and keep playing your best game on and off the pitch. I wouldn't recommend anything that I don't believe in. You Perform is the real deal. And just for you, they're offering an exclusive saving. Click the link in the description below and use code MARK20 at checkout. Join professional footballers all over the world that now take active collagen to make injuries a thing of the past and recover faster. Grab yours now and transform your game. Normally really good, but I, I struggle <laughs> yeah. days. So I've actually changed yours as well. Uh, yeah. I'm doing MLS goalkeepers. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. This is really funny. Because yeah. obviously you said that you was linked with the MLS yeah. a couple of years. And yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah. So that's funny. So I've got uh, MLS characters and then I've actually got five computer game characters. Okay. As the other ones. Right. So we can test your knowledge here. So yeah. it's goalie or no goalie. Yeah. One point for each correct answer. So number one, Steve Clark. I'm going to go no goalie. He is a goalkeeper. He is the Houston Dynamo goalkeeper. 37 years old as well. I always get their age in if they're the same yeah. age as me. Right. No, I would never get that. Number two, Franklin Clinton. Franklin Clinton. This is why I'm on a bit of a spiral cuff. I get two wrongs for it. <laughs> I'm going to go no goalie. He is not a goalkeeper. He is a GTA character, Franklin. Franklin, yeah. Are you yeah, play GTA? Remember, yeah. Do you know what it is when, now that you see it and you say Franklin? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Said, yeah. Right, number three, Oliver Semel. Semel. I'm just trying to think. I do know a few of my last goalkeepers, but spelled with an S E M. S E M M L E. I feel like I've seen his name, but I'm going to go no goalie. He is a goalkeeper, German goalkeeper, plays for Philadelphia Union. Yeah. Great name. Yeah, Simmel. Right, number four, Trevor Phillips. I feel like you've just went like a standard name to try and throw us <laughs> off here. <laughs> um, I'm well within my rights to do that sort yeah, of Yeah, I know. Um, I'm going to go no goalie. He is not a goalkeeper. Trevor from GTA. Oh, yeah. Because I keep going GTA. Yeah. <laughs> I've got I mean... five GTA characters. <laughs> See how well you know the game. God. 
Number five, Leicester Crest. I'm trying to think back my GTA days <laughs> now, but I haven't played it for about 15 years. I've started replaying it. That's oh. why I've done this. I don't remember a Leicester in GTA, so I'm going to go goalie. He is a GTA character. Oh, Leicester, the computer guy yeah. that arranges all the bank heists. Yeah. Honestly, this is bringing back some memories now, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> I've started replaying it. I was yeah. like, this will be quite funny because I'm sure <laughs> yeah. you would have played it. I know. Right, number six, Lamar Davis. I'm going to go goalie on that. It's Franklin's best mate, Lamar. Oh, God. Honestly. Uh, how good want, are the names? Yeah, they could be goalies. Not, yeah, on, honestly, it's... I remember playing GTA and it's it's one of them things where it sounds like a great goalie name. It's a great name goalie well, name. Yeah. Every single one yeah. of them is a great goalie name. Right, number seven, Chris Brady. Gotta be an MLS goalie. He's an MLS <laughs> yeah. goalie, mate. Cool, I did three in a row of like GTA characters. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Brady, Chicago Fire goalkeeper. Yeah. Number eight, Matthew Freeze. I'm going to go goalie on that he as well. He is a goalkeeper. Yeah. He is the New York City goalkeeper. Yeah. You're on a roll now. Yeah. Number nine, Michael DeSanta. Do you know when you're just trying to say the first names of the characters in GTA? Um, I'm going to go goalie on that as well. He is not a goalkeeper. Michael is the main character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know when you say the last name, it actually throws us off? Michael, Franklin and Trevor, the yeah. main three characters. It actually throws us off when you say the last name. If you just said Desant Michael, I would have been like... What a goalie name, yeah, DeSantis. Yeah, I know. Definitely Especially MLS, like a Mexican goalie coming over, yeah. Right, and number 10, Tim Melia. Goalie. I was going goalie. Yeah, anyways. you had to then. Five out of ten, mate. That's not too bad. Yeah, I think MLS is... It's so tough because I, I know a lot of goalies, but then... Yeah, I think they change every year, don't they? They do, yeah. See, like, I always find that. Obviously, we were saying about uh, Bondi at LA Galaxy. Yeah. Like, he hasn't started this season. Yeah. And you're like, you end up, obviously, Lloris has gone out there. So, like, yeah. as a goalie, I, I'm a massive goalie in a few years. I follow goalies everywhere around the yeah. world. And I speak to, like, I speak to goalies, like, in Australia and everything. Yeah. It's part of the show, and I want them to be part of it. And obviously, I do MLS keepers. I was reading some of these, I was like, I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. And then I've mixed that in with American names from GTA. Yeah, I know. I was thinking it's that. It's killed you there. Yeah. No, nah, I'll take five as long as I'm, five out I'm not one of nah, two. You're not yeah. the bottom, mate. <laughs> Obviously, you, you moved to Cardiff. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about being at Cardiff. Yeah. Massive club again. Yeah. Like you said, like, you go to like a club, you establish yourself, and then you go to a massive club yeah. again. I know. I, I feel like I've just been like up, down, up, down, but I feel like now is where I've almost like fully established myself. Yeah. And, this is the first time, like, I think my brother said it when he got to Bolton, like, it's almost like, yeah, this is it sort of thing. And you can actually see yourself being there, whether it's five years, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, but what a club. It's, I mean, it's been through Premier League, back down, stuff like that. We obviously had, like, FIFA embargoes. We've had everything but, like, this season's where we're sort of out in the embargoes, the squad's coming together. Um, last year, I think we had an overhaul of like 20 odd players. Because yeah, when you signed, it was a very young squad, weren't it? Yeah, I think because we could only sign <coughs> frees and loans and stuff like that, it was just almost taking the best out. And Steve Morrison was the manager and he just wanted to play total football, which yeah. I thought was brilliant because wide lads came from League Two, me from Scotland, like all over the place. And I think that was the way to go. Yeah. Um, just it didn't quite work out. We didn't quite click with Steve Morrison, like as in we were playing well but weren't getting the results yeah. sort of thing. Um, but it was weird how Cardiff actually came about. Um, I wouldn't say they weren't interested because they were, but obviously you know Rich Lee quite well. He had Dylan at the time and Smithies had, was going. Yeah. And he knew that they kind of weren't, like that Dill might be leaving as well. And he rang Cardiff and just said, listen, Jack's available um, we think you'd be a great one as like a fight it out one, two, like you can get them done straight away and then whether you want Dill to go or if you want them to fight out and like at the time like that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He so connects the dots brilliantly, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's the best at it because I think a lot of people like when when you speak about Rich it's almost like he's got so many goalkeepers like who's the priority? It's not, he knows everything so he knows who's going where, who's coming out of where, yep. that he can bridge every single gap. And yep. that's kind of what he'd done for me. Obviously, I had 
I'd get in the name for myself doing really well up in Scotland. Um, but yeah, I, I want I got that done really early. Sometimes, like obviously, what Rich does, but it's it's the right f- time, the right place, and the yeah. right fit for the, each individual. And yeah. he just like I was saying, connecting the dots. He, he knows that one's going to be leaving, so he's straight on the phone going, "Yeah, this one's perfect for you. This is yeah. what you're looking for." Yeah. So if he does go, you've got this one teed up. Yeah. And obviously, it, it some like obviously Rich has got a lot of goalkeepers. Yeah. But the way that he manages to spin the plates and make yeah. sure that everyone's looked after and valued, and the amount of football we watch is just oh, ridiculous. Scary. He he calls himself like the goalkeeping geek, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. He? But he he he's also got time for every goalkeeper. He loves still talking about goalkeeping. Uh, I was voice noting him yesterday, stuff like that. He's got time for all of them and. Yeah, he just connected the dots on that one. Um, but yeah, it was it was kind of like I had, off the back of what I had done, it was kind of, I needed to find a way in the championship because from Scotland, obviously, if, if you're coming from like a Rangers, Celtic, you'd probably just come into the championship to play. But when you come from a St. Mirren, it's kind of like, even though I've done so well, yeah, yeah. should you really come into the championship to play? Because the, 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 the standard's obviously different and stuff like that. So it was almost like I needed to get back down to England, but also I wasn't guaranteed to go in any, anywhere and play. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was one of them that when they said Cardiff had came up, they said, "Listen, it'll be one, two. One we don't two. know. Yeah we, yeah, we don't know whether Dylan was staying, and obviously it ended up being Ryan Allsop coming in, and yeah, it was almost like a fight it out sort of situation, yeah. which I didn't mind. Um, but yeah, it was it it was the right time for a club like that, yeah, cl- yeah. club like Cardiff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, like I was saying, you have now, you feel like, and I feel like you have firmly established yeah. yourself and that, but as is goalkeeping, constantly it changes, yeah. pictures change, and people get brought in to challenge you yeah. or take your place. It's just up to you to fight it out, really, and keep yeah. your place, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I, I like having it in my own hands. Like last season, I, I think I played five or six games, which I was like, God, not playing again. Do you know what I mean? Like, do I need to go somewhere else yeah. and play? Um, but then it's weird how quickly football can change. Like I look at when I made my debut, Tim gets injured. I was meant to be leaving the club. Tim gets injured. Rob does his I play. And then the start of this season, I was thinking, well, I'm not going to be playing. Is it time to move on um, while my kind of stock's Stop high? Still high yeah. And I thought, yeah, probably it is. And then I done pre-season, looked like Ryan Allsop was going to play. And I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll give it the first couple of games. Because you know what pre-season is like? You know from what games you're playing. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know how it's geared to he, that final but game of pre He didn't really do that. So it was kind of like we went away to Portugal and I was captain and played against Braga, but then Ryan also played against Porto. So we didn't really know who was playing. Um, and he played the last pre-season game we played in, um, it was a testimonial against Wickham. Uh, Jackson, the boy Jackson, is it? Yeah. Um, I think it was Jackson. Anyway. But uh, we played in that game and... Rocky done his calf in the game, uh, last pre-season game. I came on second uh, second half, kind of, and I thought, well, is he going to be fit? It was one of them touch and go, um, and he wasn't. And I ended up playing Leeds' first game of the season, had a worldie, um, and sort of had three, four, like, unbelievable games. And they just said, yeah, we're going to offer you a new contract straight away. And Ryan Allsop was, like, kind of, he's going, and Alex Runnison's coming in, but I'm like... Just something like that, like a small calf injury. Like, if that doesn't happen... You don't mind, might not get your new deal. You might not establish yourself. Yeah, yeah. like, where would I be? Because I would have probably tried to move on, if I'm honest, because... Sounds like, like it was you or Ryan. Yeah, basically, it was going to be one of us moving on. Um, but by him just getting a little bit of a calf injury, I play five games, new contract comes, and then play, like, 25 games a season. It's it, It's crazy how quick things change in football you feel like you're the unluckiest yeah yeah. and then something like this happens so nah it's been I love the place down Cardiff I'm obviously there this year and next year like guarantees yeah um and yeah as I say it's taken till 30 where I feel like established and I feel like I've got my all my games in that I need to I've played Scotland League One Premier League and now it's like championship I've you've moved around as well traveling it's not easy what people don't realise is moving house, living yeah. in hotels, that yeah. ain't easy. So, yeah. so now you feel settled and established. It it makes yeah. you play better because you're happier. Of course it does. I think I counted the other day and it was like in eight years or nine years I had lived in something like 20 houses. I mean, like 
how can anybody in any yeah. walk of life, let alone football, yeah. get the best out of themselves when that's the situation? Yeah, it was, and I think you're moving around, like you're never really settled. And I think as a goalkeeper, like you know, you're not gonna, be, you go somewhere for a year where you think, I just need to get games, but you know you're gonna be off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, to kind of get down there and get like real settled, it's almost like you can relax a little bit more and you enjoy your football a little bit more. It's a good place to live as well. Yeah, to me, it's just so far from everything. But yeah, like every, every away game is an overnight stay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, what a what a city, what a place. Um, yeah, it's such a good club as well. It's it, it's kind of you can see this season that we started off unbelievable. We had a few injuries. We've dropped off a little bit. Um, but you can see like the progression of the club, and if I can be a part of that, like yeah. it's going to be unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, and obviously your old man will be just looking for the away games because the home that's games are too does. far. Yeah, that's literally all he does. Every away game he goes to, um, <laughs> like my brother, he he doesn't go to the games, and so, he doesn't even watch my games. He's yeah. like, on, I was the same when he played. Like we can't watch each other's I games. Bet it's weird. Yeah. No, it's like I'm so nervous watching him play, really? and he's the same with me. Whereas, like, when we played, we weren't nervous, do you know what I mean? Bizarre, so we actually couldn't watch each other play. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, my dad, he he obviously travels to the away games and stuff like that. But, but yeah, my my brother, he's out of football now and he's, like, Loving doesn't watch it, yeah. Right, I, I want to talk a little bit about the, the goal to keep uh, that geeky stuff. So, yeah. currently you're in the One Glove. Yeah. How long have you been with One Glove? So it was through Rob Elliott. So it was when I was at Newcastle. You've been so with them for 20, ages. I only remember you wearing them. Yeah. Nine years at, at the time. I remember because I was on the bench at Newcastle and I had a pair of Puma gloves that I had bought from Sports Direct. No, I way. couldn't get any gloves from anyone. It was so. And then, yeah, Rob obviously, Rob and Miles brought the one glove and they were like, would you? And I would have took anything for free. Yeah. And I don't know what it was about them. I don't know, like I like the like the curved palm and stuff like that. They just. No, when you know about a glove, I was yeah. just like, yeah, they're the ones. Yeah. And yeah. they're free. Yeah, basically. Anything <laughs> I could get my hands on, I also oh, marry goals yeah, at the time. Obviously, the, the one glove has just gone from strength to strength to yeah. strength. And like in what's such a competitive market, they've yeah. managed to really establish themselves. Yeah. Obviously, it helps when they've got like David Raya and stuff like that yeah. now. But again, similar to like yourself, they would have picked up keepers from low. Like yeah. David Raya was like out on loan, I think, at Southport yeah. when they signed him at yeah. the one glove. So, to to stick with someone like yeah. that is incredible. Yeah, I am. Um, as I say, I, I just like they they they're the type of glove that I just I loved at the time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they started from nothing, and they've just I think they they've stayed loyal. People people stayed loyal them, but as well they're kind of like a great brand because they've they're not the prices of Adidas yeah. and like that are like fortunes yeah. now, yeah. which like so like a lot of young kids love the one glove. Yeah, of course. Um. But no, for me, I'm. I mean, but once I get a glove, like I don't like to change it. Yeah. And Miles knows me by now, and I can only wear white gloves. Yeah, white gloves. Yeah. Right, what size are you? I'm a nine. And you wear a, a? They're like a hybrid cut, aren't they? Yeah, they're almost like a half a roll type thing. Um, I've kind of never changed the palm for for years now. Um, I'm not a fan of negative cut, anything like that. Just that sort of. How do you get the plastic off? Honestly, it's like I go of, for a little a little bite at times. The bane of your life, isn't it? Oh, you take a tiny little bit of uh, so foam annoying. off, and you're like, oh, I have to start again. But yeah, you feel like you've ruined them when you pinch them too much, don't you? Yeah, because as well, I like I sometimes wear new pairs for a game. Yeah. So I'll like go into a warm up and like before a game, yep. I'm like sat there for 10, 20 minutes, the, taking the plastic off. I don't know what it is. I love the. I know a lot of goalkeepers don't like the new feel of gloves, but. Like, because I said in the game, it's a parry thing. I like that, you know how new gloves fit? Yep. Like, they're so tight and snug that I'm like, yeah, I love them in a the game. See, like, my hands are big. Like, I wear, like, a size 10 and a half or 11. Yeah. But when I start washing a pair of gloves, I'm like, they're too baggy. Yeah. Now. So, like, you lose that, like, new the glove shape, feel. Yeah, yeah, the shape type So then, thing. like, I've now started just trying to wash the palms. Yeah. Because it, it frustrates me how a glove starts to go baggy. Like, yeah. I, I don't get through a lot of gloves anymore. I don't, no. I don't need a lot of gloves. Yeah. So then I'm like... The latex is still unreal, but they're getting baggier because I'm washing them. Yeah, yeah. It does my head in. I know. I am I go through quite a few because, do you know, like away trips and stuff yeah. like that, because we're overnight and, like, I literally, like, I'll wash them after a game and, like, they come back and they say, oh, my glove's back from, the like, getting dried and yeah. stuff like that. Like, it takes a few days and stuff. But, no, nah, these these one gloves, I, f I love them because I feel like I can wear them, like, yeah. straight out of the pack. Have you honest. got any weird superstitions you do with them? How you look after them or anything? Nah, not really. I'm... 
I would say I, I'll wash them like after most training sessions and stuff like that. But do you know when they're like almost fully gone, like I'll give them to the wash and stick them in the washing machine and stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff. And I get them to wash them with like just like the stuff they wash the kit with and they actually come out a little bit sticky and you get like a couple more uses out yeah. of them and stuff like that. But nah, no real superstitions with them to be honest. No. Nah. What why white gloves then? I think I wore black gloves once, and do you know when it was? It was when Paul Robinson wore the black Nike. Do you black remember? Nikes, yeah. And I think he the, had a beast at the, the zooms time. The Total Naughty Zooms or whatever. Yeah, I think he sh- he went. The, I remember he went to the black gloves, and he had a couple of bad games or something like that. Yeah. So I tried them, and I had the biggest beast ever. Did and you? I was like, do you know where it just sticks with you? Like, I'm never wearing black gloves See, again. See, look, I've tried them in training and that a few times, and your hands feel tiny. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like, I don't know. I, when I wear black boots, I feel slower and yeah. I can't jump as high. Yeah. So like when I've got white mitts on and white boots on, I yeah. feel like I'm like, yeah, I'm on it here. Yeah, I always say like white boots and white gloves get to your move. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It's it weird. I, like, I look at a goalkeeper. Catches the eye. And if a goalkeeper has his shirt tucked in, black yeah. boots, black gloves, it's almost like it doesn't catch your eye as much, which back when you were younger, you got told, oh, you don't want to be catching the eye. You just want to do your job and Keep stuff. Keep a quiet like. goal. Yeah, whereas now I think it's changed so much yeah. that you want to look like you're the part as well. But yeah, I'm white gloves and predominantly white boots for the heart to get hold of now. They are now, aren't they? Especially yeah. studs. Yeah, like I know. Adidas has stopped doing white boots and studs. They just yeah. do mold. So then you have to get them converted, but I don't really like their converts. Nah, see, I've always been Nike with boots. So I can't wear like Adidas and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, Nike keep changing for strikers yeah. and stuff like that, yeah. don't they? How do you typically prepare for a match, Jack? Um, you got like routines that you go through. As in before the well, game, yeah, I, like on the day of a game, like what's yeah. your usual? So I'm normally I'll take the, always take the dogs for a walk in the morning, and I feel like just getting up fresh air. Yeah. Like I'll take them for forty five minutes, stuff like that. And like I've got this weird thing of like when I'm walking, I'll try and concentrate on things, visualization so, like, I'll, stuff. I'll, no, I'll kind of like stare at stuff. So like I'll be walking up the same post, and I'll stare. I just get my eyes kind of. I don't know why I do it, but I remember I done it once where I was like I was walking, I was a bit tired, and you know what you like where you like. You just do your walk and you get back. Uh, so I like try and concentrate on little things. Yeah. Like um, I don't eat any pre-match whatsoever. You don't eat any pre-match. Not you a don't single eat nothing thing. on a day of a game. Not so a you single like to thing. Feel proper light. Me and my brother are exactly the same. Yeah. I remember Ben um, used to be like that. Yeah, don't eat a single thing. I'll have a coffee on the way into the stadium. I'll nip to the Starbucks get a coffee. Um, and then yeah, once I mean I like to get in real early. So yeah. if we're a three o'clock kick off, you're normally in for what, half one? I'm normally in at 12 o'clock. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, half 12. I'm always an hour before yeah, any meeting time. Yeah, I'm like probably is that, late is half that 12. F- fear of being late, or is that just you like quiet time at the stadium? I think a bit of both. Like, have you ever had the goalie nightmares? Oh, 100%. Yeah, we all have. Honestly, we talk about it, but like. Game the, kicks off and you're still not ready. Yeah, you're still outside the stadium, you're trying to get in and you can't get in and stuff. <laughs> do you know, know who always put us onto that is Lee Butler. Yeah. He always used to talk about the dream that he had, and the game was kicking off and he was running out trying to put his gloves on as it kicked off yeah I, honestly I every goalkeeper gets some like and if you don't get them you're not a goalkeeper yeah, no 100%. but it's it's like the one way you like you can't get your boots on and yeah. stuff like that so I don't know if it comes from that but also I'm like anyone you speak to, I'm quite laid back so I like just to get in and take my time I don't like to be rushed or anything like that like see when you go to away games and like you're 10 minutes late or something like that and you think I've got like because I go out, I don't know if you're the same. Do you still go out an hour before kickoff? Yeah, but then I come in like 25 minutes before kickoff. Yeah. So I like that time, that 10, 15 minutes when there's no one in the dressing room. Yeah. So I, th- I like, so we'll be the same. We'll go out at two o'clock. So normally I, you'd get to a stadium at 20 past one, half past yeah. one. See, when you get there at 22, I'm like, oh, I've got my strap and oh, I've got to do this, got yeah. to do that. I hate being rushed. Yeah. Um, I'm the same. That's what I, I'm. Exactly yeah, so I like to get there nice and early, and then once I'm there, I've got no real rituals, anything like that. I'm quite, as a goalkeeper, I'm not really like superstitious or yeah, anything like just that. Just go through your usual routines and stuff. Yeah, like that. almost. Yeah, little routines. I don't even mind changing a little bit to my warm up at times and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's normal match day routines. Yeah. Nothing out of the ordinary for yeah. me. I wouldn't say now. Just nice and chilled. That's yeah. the best way I think. Honestly, like because I, I know. He's, Jokes back before about keeping a quiet goal, but like when you're calm, yeah, and you're you're more imposing for your defenders, and yeah. then they know what to expect from you. It's like a level of consistency, yeah. So like, obviously, us going in early and yeah. sitting there and chilling out, it's like a 
you want to be the one that goes, morning lads, you right? Yeah. Morning lads. And then you yeah. don't have to say a lot of words, no. but they know that you're there as a character and a and person. And the common influence. A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I find there has been games where I've been like, up for like, come on lads, blah, blah. And like, I've not had a great game. And it's weird, I do think that common thing. And it's weird because we've just played against Watford a few weeks ago where we won 1-0. And I was like seriously ill before the game. Like, I didn't even do the warm-up properly. Yeah. Like... Keep yourself to yourself. No, I couldn't even, like... I was like, I can't play, but we only had a young lad on the bench at the time. He had never... He, he's only played Welsh Prem type of thing, and, like, they were like, can you get through it? I was like, felt like I was going to pass out. Like, I felt horrible. And I'd done no warm-up. I literally caught 10 volleys, and, like, I felt like I was going to be sick, everything yeah. like that. Um, walked out onto the pitch. Like, I was like, I'm not going to get through this game. I had an unbelievable game. Did you? And it was just because, I think because, like, I was so calm and, like, you kind of got nothing to lose. You're like, True. I'm ill kind of thing. But, like, it's weird because after that game, I've started to do a little bit less, less in my warm-up. Yeah. I'm like, even, like, it was weird when the ball was getting switched. Normally, I'd, like, jog across, like, to get across. Whereas in the Waffle game, I was just like, oh, walk across, like... And it's weird. I felt like I was picking the ball up better and stuff like that. Like, Maybe just focusing more instead of trying to do multiple jobs. You was just going, I'm just going to affect <laughs> these moments. Yeah, and it's weird. It's something that I picked up because like, when the ball's getting cleared, sometimes I sprint up behind the ball and stuff like that. Whereas like, I think just that game of me just walking, it almost like slowed the game down. I felt like I seen a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, it's like how I see Alison play the game. He's very just like... Just walks about. Like he's not like, interested a lot. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like that is that can be a big thing in football. So yeah, yeah. class. Right, uh, what's your release away from football? Golf. Yeah, yeah big, big golf. Still, we've we've played, in, yeah, we, we have played. Yeah, um, you're a big slinger as well, weren't you? Yeah, I've got the shortest backswing ever. Yeah, you have. But yeah. Just yeah, consistent down the middle. My brother was a good golfer as well. Yeah, well, we both play. It's weird how similar we are with everything like football, golf. We play off the same handicap, but. As, as soon as I can get up north, I kind of get two, three games of golf in yeah. on my days off and stuff like that. But yeah, golf's the biggest Who's got a better beard and trim out of you and your brother? Him at the minute. <laughs> <'cause>, uh, <laughs> I need a little bit of a trim, but he's uh, he's got the old transplant on the... Has go he got, yeah, yeah, he's got the hair transplant done. done it, yeah? So, yeah so, fair play, go So on, I'll, I'll give him the, the hair, but yeah. yeah, I'll take the beard at the minute. Yeah, fair play. Now, obviously, I've played obviously with you and your brother, golf, both of yeah, both yeah. good golfers, like solid... Yeah, but even like I was saying about like the north being a, a little bit of a hotbed, like Gaz was not a bad golfer, yeah. erratic, yeah, and angry, yeah. But obviously, there's just something in the genes up there. That... Yeah, because the, the, there's nothing else to do. Do you True, know? What? Yeah. It's weird. Like, you either in trouble or you're playing sports. Up yeah, there. down south, like obviously, you come here today, you can literally do anything you want. Whereas up north, your probably sports are going out and getting in trouble, and yeah. ours was sports. So. Yeah. And you know Gaz as well as I don't know. I'm pleased he plays golf. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I say. But um, I, I, hopefully Gaz is in the right direction, man. Christ. Yeah, but no, what it's a fella. yeah. I think we've had some great rounds of golf, funny laughs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's weird how me and my brother are so similar, but so polar opposites. Yeah, like yeah. he's probably more angry than me. I'm more calm, but like how we're so similar and we're like the same things because. We didn't really, when he moved to Tottenham, we didn't really speak for years, like just because he was away all the time and stuff like that. But no, there's the advice and stuff he's given me. It's such a good thing for me to have. Um, whether it's like off the pitch advice, like yeah. investments, whatever. Like he's made so many mistakes and yeah. done so many things that it's, it's such a good thing for me to have. No, it's amazing. And obviously, having played with you both but obviously working with you Jack it's, it's such a, a pleasure for even for me to say like how well you've done and kicked on and yeah. you keep on developing and growing as a goalkeeper and, that, and, and I'm buzzing to you yeah. doing well appreciate it right last question then uh, what does the goalkeepers union mean to you it's always a deep one to finish on mate it is yeah do you know what it is I think you realise the goalkeeper union when do you know sometimes like you'll have worked with maybe a goalkeeper that's like kind of not being involved and like and like you train with them and you're a bit like it can be difficult do you know what yeah. I mean and then when you get a good good group of goalies like how good can it be like like you say with my brother like whether it's head tennis football golf like even just like after games like talking about things like goals because no one else is going to back you up other yeah. it's almost like everybody hates goalkeepers <laughs> there's there's no one else that understands us no. apart from each other yeah and even though that 
we want each other's place. We still want the best for yeah. each other. It's mad. And you respect each other yeah. so much. And it's weird. I was talking to my brother about it, like, because you two were competing so much yeah, at yeah. Bolton. Like, he played a lot. Then you came in, and yeah. then he came back in. Yeah. And But he, he said, like, the amount of respect I have for Chomp. He said, I used to watch Chomp and train and be like, I have to try. And, like, he said, he was an unbelievable trainer. Yeah, I, like, watched, yeah. I used to do But I, st I still do all the shooting practices. I still, like, and yeah. Ben wasn't the same. So no. then, like, even I would be playing on a Saturday, and I'd be doing all the shooting drills, and Ben would be going, "What are you doing?" And yeah. Like, no, this is this is what I need. Yeah. And he'd be feel he'd feel well guilty. Yeah, and he'd have to try and jump in. But we had so many goalkeepers are different like yeah. that. Like Tim Crew was a terrible trainer. Yeah. But the best I've ever seen on a Saturday. It's crazy. Isn't it? Rob Elliott was the best trainer I've ever had, and I had I was lucky at the time. I had Shea Shea Given, Christ, uh, Steve Harper, Fraser Foster, and Tim Crew. And you couldn't get four different goalkeepers. No, miles polar opposites. Yeah, yeah, but like even then, I seen like that was the start of a goalkeeper union because they were all should be number ones in the Premier League, and they were all obviously at different stages. But um, yeah, the the goalkeeper union, it's one of them. Like you say, you can talk to them after a game. Like for me, it's good that I can ring my brother and he's played in goal. Yeah, but just that like little things like people think are. Oh, Oh, they only took a tiny little deflection, you should save it. And I'm like, they're actually the harder ones. Like, yeah. When it takes a big deflection, you can get after it. But the one that like a little just nick. moves here, it does you, but people don't like understand these well, sort they of things. Seen it. No. So I think it's uh when you get a good goalkeeping like group, it can be so fun. Cause like even though when you're not playing, like you want to go in and enjoy it. Yeah. And you know what it's like when you're not playing, it's a bit like, oh, I've got to train like when you got a good goalie group and stuff like that, it's, it's legend, right? isn't it? Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. Right, Jack, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you very much for coming no. on. It's been class, mate. No, I've absolutely loved class it. Class to yeah. catch up and that, and I appreciate the effort of you coming across from Cardiff to yeah. London. No worries at all. This has been the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Uh, please make sure you like, follow and subscribe. Cheers, guys. What a save from Mark Howard.